Clinton will attend a major State Department conference on the history of the Indochina War. And she's invited two major foreign policy figures to come and speak at that event. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and Richard Holbrook. Isn't that interesting? We'll get back to that. Now, the conference plans to center on what caused the fall of Indochina, as if Kissinger was just a mere observer of that fall rather than one of the orchestrators. Did Clinton forget that when he was Secretary of State of the U.S., under his direct direction, he escalated the war in Vietnam, dumping more bombs than during all of World War II? The number of civilian deaths were in the millions, and 20,000 U.S. soldiers also lost their lives. All while Kissinger prolonged that war, even with grave doubts about its chance for success. He thought, hey, let's just extend the war, prop it up, even though it's unpopular. And maybe, if Congress keeps pumping money into their efforts, the U.S. Uh, was bound to win. Sounds a little bit like those wars that we have waging right now for the past nine years, huh? Prop up an unpopular war, continue asking for money from Congress, and extend the U.S. involvement in the country without officially ever declaring war. And at the same time, maintain a massive U.S. US military presence after that war is over. So do you think that's why Holbrook might be in attendance, too? To shed light on the similarities between the Vietnam War and our current efforts in Afghanistan? Oh, to be a fly in the wall at that conference. If I didn't know any better, I'm sure that Holbrook is going to pretend like he's not repeating the exact same mistakes that Kissinger made in the 70s. It's like Clinton putting Rumsfeld and Cheney up on stage to give them an award for bringing peace to Iraq. And to add, all, add to all this irony, Hillary Clinton herself once opposed Kissinger's mass murders by protesting his actions back when she was a mere college student. Now, the saying, I guess, is true. Those who can't remember the past are indeed condemned to repeat it. And I guess this definitely is proof. An insult to history. Joining me to talk more about this is RT contributor and investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. Wayne, talk a little bit about this. I mean, of course, um, when you get to be the Secretary of State, you've got to do certain things, but a lot of people find this just appalling. What do you think about this? Well, Henry Kissinger, whose real name is Heinz Kissinger, uh, after all, uh, he's probably the most prominent unindicted war criminal roaming around today. Uh, it's, it's just kind of uh, surreal with the coup attempt in Ecuador that this looks like it's hearkening back to Kissinger's policies in Latin America, which saw the overthrow and murder of Salvador Allende in Chile, the uh, Kissinger's uh, prompting of the creation of Operation Condor and Plan Mercurio, which uh, saw uh, uh, people being disappeared and kidnapped from various uh, Latin American countries, leftist uh, activists. And uh, now we have Hillary Clinton praising Kissinger to the, uh, to the nines. Uh, and also, uh, we should mention, also at this conference, is Richard Holbrook. He is the State Department head of the Afghanistan-Pakistan policy. A lot of people today and yesterday, uh, with news of this conference happening, they're drawing sort of a, a direct line from some of those policies that happened back in the Vietnam era to some of the policies that are going on right now in Afghanistan. Talk a little bit about that. Well, after all, when uh, Richard Holbrook, um, up until 1970, was part of the Kissinger team uh, in the Nixon White House, helping to craft Vietnam policy, including uh, op Operation Phoenix, which saw the indiscriminate assassination of uh, South Vietnamese political and religious leaders. Uh, so again, we see some of this playing out in Afghanistan and Pakistan with target, targeted killings. That of course, kills, they kill a lot of civilians in the process. And uh, uh, I think those parallels between Afghanistan uh, and Vietnam are good parallels. And we see the war bleeding from Afghanistan to Pakistan, just like we saw Kissinger authorize the war to bleed over into Cambodia. And we know uh, the, the terrible results of that uh, bringing to power eventually Pol Pot. And, and the Cambodian killing fields. I mean, I think it's pretty interesting. A anyone in power right now, of course, wants to learn from uh, mistakes from, from the past. And uh, certainly Vietnam is a good example. But what do you think is the real reason? Did this conference have to happen, this, this State Department conference on the history of Indochina? A lot of people thinking this is just giving uh, these war criminals, as you call them, a platform to continue to talk about their policies. Um, I know for years and years, uh, Secretary Kissinger simply said that the reason that the U.S. didn't win the Vietnam War because Congress cut off funding um, 
It didn't seem yesterday, based on what I saw, that he is changing his tune much. He's not remorseful at all. He's been responsible. He was responsible for some eight million deaths in Indochina, in uh, Vietnam, South, North, uh, Cambodia, and Laos. Uh, he's very arrogant when it comes to his uh, role in history. Uh, there's a number of investigations around the world of, of his war crimes, including in places like Chile. They'd love to get him on the stand. Uh, but I, I, sometimes I think the State Department is tone deaf. We we talk about inside the beltway, well, there's also inside Foggy Bottom, uh, so it's like, a, it's like a dead zone within a, a, a zone of ignorance, uh, and uh, it was just the, the timing of this. I, I would also see, say that Holbrook, we, we look at him helping to craft Kissinger's policies. We had this uh, terrible comment uh, attributed to Cole Holbrook saying, uh, Pakistan's army's first priority is to attack the Pakistani Taliban, not to engage in flood relief. I go back to the CIA archives and I find out that Holbrook was involved in Vietnam policy when we were actually um, making rain there. The Air Force had a project called Intermediary Compatriot, also known as Operation Popeye, seeding clouds to interdict uh, supplies coming from North Vietnam and the Ho Chi Minh Trail through Laos to South Vietnam. Washed away entire villages in the process. Uh, I'm not suggesting that uh, the U.S. signed a convention against weather modification, but uh, I think maybe it's uh, time to take a look at uh, maybe Holbrook is going back to his old bag of tricks, consulting with Mr. Kissinger, and, uh, and, and maybe they're pulling old tricks out of Vietnam and applying them uh, to uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Certainly an interesting meeting of the minds, one uh, Secretary Clinton probably didn't think a few years ago that would be happening. Real briefly, a lot of critics also comparing uh, some of those policies that uh, Henry Kissinger sort of authored and was behind the wheel of in Vietnam to, um, to some of the drone attacks of today. I mean, are you hearing in any of your research people making that connection as well? Well, certainly the, the drone attacks are said to be more targeted, but we know they, uh, you know, there's one terrorist found in a village, they wipe out the entire village, kill all the people in the village. We, we saw that in Vietnam with the indiscriminate B-52, Operation Rolling Thunder, that just carpet bombed South Vietnam and North Vietnam and Laos, and uh, uh, many, many civilians were killed in the process. Again, Holbrook was involved, so was Kissinger. I think we see, we're seeing back to the future here in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And certainly you're not the only one. RT contributor and investigative journalist More about this. Hey, Mr. Rampin, you wrote an article published the day before the State Department conference pointing out some of the extreme ironies here. What do you think are the most appalling aspects of this? Well, uh, to begin with, uh, Hillary Robin Clinton, Secondary Kissinger, and Richard Holbrook talked for a total of two or three hours yesterday about the war in Vietnam and never once mentioned the fact that hundreds of thousands and possibly millions of innocent civilians uh, were murdered uh, by the United States, particularly Henry Kissinger, who dropped four million tons of bombs uh, on Indochina while he was in power, compared to two million tons of bombs that were dropped on all of Europe and the entire Pacific theater in World War II. So the first thing is I think the absolute, the, 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 non-discussion of the murder of hundreds of thousands of innocent people not even being mentioned uh, is I think, I'm not sure it's an irony, but it, it's, it's really what the problem is today whether you look at American policy in Afghanistan, Pakistan or anywhere else there's a total indifference uh, to the human beings who are being wiped out by um, American military activities. The second irony was that Hillary Clinton did um, uh, protest Henry Kissinger in her youth, but now that she's in power, she's honoring him by giving him a platform to perpetuate his lies. His most important lie, besides ignoring the, the mass murder he conducted in Indochina, is to blame Congress for the fall of Indochina, uh, as opposed to um, uh, his own mistakes. Uh, and this is very relevant to the president because there's a campaign presently in the United States to say that the reason we lost Saigon is we didn't give enough money to the Tew government. Therefore, in Afghanistan, 
we have to keep uh, spending a lot more money, send more troops, give more aid, or otherwise it, it'll be Congress to blame. So they're trying to use Vietnam to justify what they're doing in Afghanistan today. I want to so interrupt think, you really quick, uh, Mr. Bremen, because we will get back to talking a little bit about the connections between Vietnam War and the present. Um, but I want to go back to, yeah. to yesterday. During her introduction, Secretary of State Clinton did mention the opposition that she felt during that time. She talked about her friends who enlisted and were drafted. <clears> and yet she said the lessons of that era continue to inform the decisions we make. Uh, first of all, I want to know, do you think that the irony was totally lost on her simply because she's now in a position of power, or do you think she felt a little bit uncomfortable about, you know, where she was standing today as opposed to sort of some of those important things that shaped her? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't know. Um, you know, people can defend themselves very easily against unpleasant information. To me, the other part of it is you had Richard Holbrook speaking yesterday, who's making the exact same. He's in charge of America's Afghan Vietnam policy. He's making, excuse me, Afghan Pakistan policy. He's making the same mistakes he made in Vietnam. That is trying to uh, prop up an unpopular, corrupt government. So um, I don't know what Hillary was thinking. I actually was moved by her call for reconciliation. Uh, Henry Kissinger brought up reconciliation yesterday. Uh, and I think that's a very worthy goal, but you can't have reconciliation, as we learned from South Africa, without truth. And I think until America faces up to the millions of murdered in Indochina, uh, or for that matter, any country, the Soviet Union to what it did in Afghanistan, uh, I don't think you can have either truth or reconciliation. You were mentioning Richard Holbrook. Um, he was, of course, there also. And uh, a lot of critics of him and also critics of the Afghanistan war make a direct connection uh, between Afghanistan and South Vietnam, particularly in the propping up by the U.S. government of an unpopular regime. I know that you wrote that the U.S. has, quote, learned nothing from history. Talk about some of the worst lessons you think that we are doomed to repeat again. Well, uh, the, the worst thing is this idea of propping up an unpopular, corrupt government, uh, trying to, uh, uh, and, and, and knowing in advance, Richard Holbrook knows perfectly well that the Karzai government will never be able to stand on its own. It's ridiculous. And um, he's even said, um, I think, you know, Bob Woodward's book that just came out, uh, there's evidence mm -hmm. of Holbrook, I believe, behind closed doors kind of saying this will never work. But, uh, you know, of course, when it does come to the message and conveying that policy, oftentimes you have to to go with what the uh, agreed upon message is, I guess. But you're saying that this is a little strange because Holbrook doesn't even believe that this can happen. And yet here he is. Yeah, I believe he's putting career above country. I mean, you look at a man like Dan Ellsberg, uh, who when he realized that the policy couldn't work, he had the courage to go public. Richard Holbrook could have an enormous impact for the better on U.S. Afghan policy, in my opinion, if he were to go public, resign, and say, look, this thing isn't working. Instead, he's promoting something in public that he doesn't believe in private. That's the, not only is that hypocrisy, but I think that deserves our country. Uh, you know, and I want to bring about one more point. Other critics talk about some of the policies back in the 60s and 70s of some of the strategic bombing that killed so many civilians. You were speaking about this. I want to know if you see similarities between those policies and, for example, the drone attacks of today. Absolutely. I, I think, uh, by the way, you asked me for the main lessons from Vietnam. One was what we just said. You can't prop up an unpopular government. Two... Um, this idea of going after enemy sanctuaries, that's what Kissinger did in Cambodia. In order to protect U.S. troops in South Vietnam, he invaded Cambodia. The result of that was he created the Khmer Rouge, who were, I was in Cambodia in 1970, they, they were nothing. Um, it was a direct result of America's bombing that he created the Khmer Rouge. Today, America is making a 10 times worse mistake by extending the war into Pakistan. I predict that um, this will be a greater foreign policy error than Vietnam. Uh, there, the Afghan tail is wagging the Pakistani dog. Uh, you saw today that they just cut off, uh, the Pakistanis got so angry at the NATO bombing incursions that they cut off uh, the routes into Afghanistan for NATO supplies. 
Uh, this is the second biggest mistake from Vietnam. You have to accept, quote, enemy sanctuaries. There's no point in extending the war to another country, especially nuclear-armed Pakistan, which is being destabilized as the Americans... It's not about justice. It's not about agenda. It's not about mobilizing people. It's about dialing for corporate dollars. These two parties have sold the U.S. government and the American people to the highest bidders.